people make that these days. I want to just read the rest of that scripture passage that your grandfather started with. God defines love for us and he says love is patient, it is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it's not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking. It's not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs, it does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects and always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. I try to remind young folks when they stand before me at on the wedding day that uh, you know Christ came to earth. God in the flesh and left heaven walk among us to show us that we don't have to get beat up and overwhelmed by this world. I try to remind young folks, you know, there comes a time when you have to leave a lot behind when you get married. You walk away from things and sometimes if God left heaven to come and walk among us, when you're married, sometimes you have to put your agenda aside for each other. After 50 years, you can learn that well. I remind them also that uh, Many times Jesus was just exalted. The scripture tells us he was wore out and he had to seek a place just to get away and rest a little bit. But then he would always come back and minister to the folks who needed him. After 50 years, you know, too, there's, there's a time every now and then you just kind of need a little space, but there's a time you know you've got to come back and minister to one another. But the greatest thing that we have to remember is that. Jesus Christ died on that cross and looked down and he said, Father, forgive them. They just don't know what they're doing. Well, sometimes we act that way in marriage. You don't, you don't stay with somebody 50 years and scratch, not scratch your head and wonder, now, why in the world did they do that or say that? But what you do is, is you forgive. And I remind our folks over and over and over again that, that true love is not a feeling and it's not an emotional thing. Those of us who have been around this marriage block for, for a good while, we know that uh, there are times when you just don't feel in love. You don't feel the goosebumps and the warmth and that happiness and all the emotion that a young honeymoon is do. But what I always remind those young folks is that true love always been able to say, I love you regardless. Through the good times and the bad, through the thick and the thin. I have to remind them over and over again that, you know, life is not always a bed of roses. And God didn't put us here to make us happy. He put us here to make us holy. And when we try to live a holy life before Him, we tend to treat each other better in life. If the day before you renew your, your vows and commitments to each other, there's something I say every wedding, and I've done it for 35 years. I always remind people that true love is never, never indicated or proven by where it begins. True love is always proven by where it ends. After 50 years, it's just something about what love's all about. True love's not a feeling, it's a commitment. It's committing yourselves to stand by your spouse. As the vow said, for good, for bad, for if you're poor, all those things. And today, after 50 years, some folks will say, well, why in the world do you even want to redo those things? I think it probably do us good. It's about every anniversary, you know, every year to do those things and to say those uh, vows that, that we took so long ago. So, Melvin, on this uh, celebration of your 50th wedding anniversary, I just want to ask you, it is your desire to continue uh, to have your wife have Mary as uh, your wife and, and to live together after God's holy estate, in the holy state of matrimony. And is it your desire to continue to love her and comfort her, honor her, keep her in sickness and health, and continue to forsake all of it and you keep yourself faithful unto her the rest of your life? Okay, Mary, I'm going to ask you now, will you continue to have Melvin to be your wedded husband, to live together after God's holy estate of matrimony? We are loving and comfort and honor and keeping the sickness and health and forsake all others keep yourself faithful unto him so long as you go to live. I want you just to look at each other, join hands, face each other. And now I want you to repeat after me. And renewing these vows, having conceived.
consented to take each other's husband and wife, continuing the commitment you made 50 years ago. Melvin, repeat after me this fact. I, Melvin, take thee there to be my wedded wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better or for worse, for richer or poor, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, to death do us part. I will continue to be faithful to you and to you alone. I will pray for you and with you. I shall love you as Christ has loved me. Without condition and without end. And may God help me continue to take this, keep this back. And may God continue to help me keep this back. Amen. Amen. Mary, I ask you now to repeat after me your vow to Melvin. I, Mary, take thee, Melvin, to be my wedded husband. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better or for worse. For richer or poor. In sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, to death do us part. I will be faithful to you and you alone. I will look to you as the spiritual head of our home. I will pray with you and for you. I shall love you as Christ has loved me. Without condition.